three, it's recording. Hello. I'm just kidding. Hello, guys. Why did I wait? Hi, guys. Welcome back to my channel. And today, I want to show you how to make the beverage that has been blowing up your news feeds on social media. Um, unless you're not like me and maybe you don't follow a bunch of herbalists and homesteaders and farmers and doomsday preppers. Um, but fire cider is a tonic, it's a fall winter tonic that is basically an infused vinegar full of yummy yummy things that can help you kind of your immune system stay in tips top shape um, throughout the season. It is basically a bunch of aromatic um, pungent hot um, vegetables and plants that are really good for the, di the digestive system which we know we're eating a bunch of heavy foods during the winter and you need those things to kind of get the digestive fire going so it can digest those foods they are antimicrobial they are antibacterial and they just, they help you stand to top shape so you would take a teaspoon or a shot glass a day you can infuse it with honey but we'll go through the whole process um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get these things started so first up we have our horseradish. I am just chopping it into more manageable segments so that I can grate it into the bowl. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. You can certainly just chop it up, but I wanted the most surface area in contact with the menstruum or the apple cider vinegar as possible for maximum extraction. Um, I'm actually pretty excited to have this in the mixture this time it's my first time using horseradish because i can never seem to find it so if you can't find horseradish don't worry about it it's totally fine it'll still turn out really great the ones that i have in front here that i've already started those do not have horseradish in it and i'm currently drinking it and it's great next up we have a lemon we're just going to chop that up make sure you wash it first you want to include the inside and the skin the skin has very good essential oils and flavor to add to the mixture, don't worry, it won't taste overly lemony unless you add too many lemons. So just be mindful of how much you're putting in and add it into the bowl. So this is ginger root and it's actually not a root, it's a rhizome. So it's the rhizome of the ginger plant. I'm just gonna peel that and chop it up and put it in. You don't have to peel it unless it is not organic, then I highly recommend that you peel it. I love ginger not only because of its awesome effects on the body, but because it is found easily in most grocery stores and it is super affordable. So now I'm just going to peel and chop the red onion and add that into the bowl. I like to add red onion because it's not only beautiful and it gives the mixture a kind of pinkish reddish color depending on how much you add, but I also feel like it kind of rounds out the flavor of the mixture as well. I love red onion sauteed and it also has a bunch of yummy helpful things um, in it as well. I believe I also talked about garlic in my blog post as well. To get the bulb out of the skin you just want to pound it down with the flat edge of your knife. If you lose one on the floor it doesn't matter just pick it up five second roll um, only if your floor is clean. And I'm just gonna cut off the little ends. You don't have to do that actually you you really shouldn't waste time on that if you don't want to. I just used to work in a kitchen as a cook, and so that was one of those old habits that died really hard. Um, so just add that into the bowl. And then we have our onion. Uh, just going to chop that up, peel it, and add the peels to our handy-dandy compost bowl, which is super helpful <laughs> when you're prepping something like this with lots of skin and peels. So you can just dump it in the compost or you can use these scraps to make veggie stock, which would also be really, really good. So just chop that up and add it to the bowl. And then we're just going to add our herbs in as well. This is the rosemary. I'm just taking all, taking the leaves off of the um, stem. You also do not have to do this at all. I don't recommend you do it. I don't know why I did it. I guess I was feeling fancy. But for the ones in the front there, I just kind of stuck the stems in to the side of the jar. I was going for like a de decorative look, but it doesn't really matter because you're gonna shake up the jar anyway. So just add your herbs in, and then you are going to mix it all together with your hands. Just get in there and really like massage it and get everything all mixed in. You can do this in the jar directly and just like shake it up, but I found it just doing it in the bowl was a lot easier for me. 
So now you'll just add the things into the jar. You don't wanna fill it up all the way. I would say about three quarters full or less and just kind of fill it all up and then cover it or fill the jar with apple cider vinegar. You're just gonna fill that up to the top, wipe off the rim of the jar. So you don't want any bacteria or anything getting in there. So just wipe that off. I am cutting a piece of parchment paper to put in between the jar and the lid because vinegar does corrode metal and I'm using a metal lid because that's what I have on hand. If you have a plastic or a glass lid, you can use that as well. So just shake it all up to get it all incorporated and nice and mixed in with the apple cider vinegar. And that's it. You're gonna shake this daily if you can remember. You probably won't remember. I don't remember. So just shake it when you uh, when you remember. It's fine. Don't worry about it. And then be sure to label it because you want to let it sit for like four, three or four weeks before you strain it out and add honey. So just label it with some masking tape with the date. If you want to put the ingredients in there, so like if you use a recipe. And you're trying to find like the best fire cider recipe ever invented just write down everything that you put in it i'm just gonna label it with um the day that i made it which is today which i don't know what day it is it's the 11th okay so i'm just gonna put on here fire cider cider 10 11 20 20. That way I know what's going on. You think you'll remember the day, you won't remember the day. Label it. Always get into the habit of labeling your herbal preparations because you may not know. So I want you to be encouraged to use what you have. You don't need a recipe per se. There are many recipes floating around. There's actually a book that was just released. I'll link that down below in the description box of different recipes that you can use. You can use tons of variations. You can add hibiscus, you can add um, different adaptogens, things like that. Whatever you want to put in, use what you have. I always, I believe that herbal medicine should be accessible. So just use what you have available to you. If you just have onions and garlic and lemons, use that, it's fine. Um, I have one prepared here and here that I am going to strain out and see how it tastes. I made this last year for my family and they hated it. And the words fire cider still incite fear in their hearts. Um, they, I, I never added honey to it. So they were just like taking straight shots of some really potent stuff. But it would make a great salad dressing. This is here. Alright. Y'all, like, y'all don't understand. It's Ooh. good, right? That's not bad at all. 
And you can also like, um, she does like the apple cider vinegar drinks in the morning. So you can also heat up some hot water, add a teaspoon to your uh, water and just drink it daily as a tonic. Or if you feel like a cold coming on, you'll want to increase the frequency. Let me know if you make it. Um, you can follow me on Instagram, share your photos on Instagram. And let me see and leave comments down below if you've made this or if you want to see other things like this in the future. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And thank you for watching today. Bye. Bye. That's not bad. See, it's okay. I'm not going to drink the rest of the glass, but...